all right so yes welcome once again everybody and uh, hope you were able to read through the book of acts uh, a couple of chapters as at least uh, and the introduction in the last uh, uh, week i hope that it helps you to understand the book of acts even better uh, we have touched on various aspects you know uh, of uh, uh, the book of acts and how uh, it it is a demonstration of the power and the glory of god through the people of god uh, and it's just the beginning uh, there are uh, uh, you know no indications that what god started in the early church he has stopped today so we can receive our inspiration and we can also trust the holy spirit to empower us and equip us in the same manner so that we are able to live for the lord so we will continue now that we have uh, an introduction uh, we will begin with chapter 1 today so if you have with you your bibles then i will uh, ask you to turn to acts chapter 1 uh, and uh, we will go chapter by chapter uh, we also know that this course we will look at passages verse by verse okay so uh, uh, verse by verse uh, you know even even though it uh, says like that uh, what we'll do is we will we may not read you know every verse but we will we will uh, get the essence of what the scriptures are saying in that passage okay uh, uh, so let's do this today because we are getting started eventually as we go forward i think it will be good that you read up uh, scriptures and come but then uh, since this is the beginning it will be good for us to quickly read through chapter 1 and then we will come back and uh, explain what chapter 1 actually means so uh, there are about uh, yeah 26 verses 26 verses how many of us here okay uh, we can read maybe five five verses at a time and uh, that way we could maybe five or six of us can complete the whole chapter yeah can we begin reading please anybody any person just start off and then uh, the next person pick up so if you can do that fast uh, we can get into the explanation of this chapter please in shalairi uh, tom is not able to hear you uh yes yes manu please go ahead the former account please go ahead i made yeah. the former account i made o theophilus of all that jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the holy spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also pre- uh, presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible infa- infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you have heard from me from for john truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now yes thank you manu uh, the next person can read another five verses please when the apostles meet together with jesus they ask him what will do at this time give the kingdom back to you jesus said to them the times and occasions are set by the father's own authority and it is not for you to know when they will be but when the holy spirit But the holy spirit comes upon you you will be filled with power and you will be witness for me in Jerusalem in all the Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth to saying this he was taken up to heaven as they watched him and loud hide him from sight 
They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away when two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Arun. I think someone else tried to read, but uh, you know, you weren't heard. So yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, Prince, uh, you can read and then uh, yeah, any other person. Yeah, Prince, please read. Uh, you're on mute, Prince. Can't hear you. Oh, that was me. I am. Kanan, Kanan. Okay, okay, Kanan. Sorry. Yeah, please, you can read. Yeah. Okay. From Lavan, right? Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from that, from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and uh, Simon, the Zealot, and Judas, and the son of James. These all continued one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether, the number of the names was about 120, and said, Men and brethren, scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who had arrested Jesus. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Kanan, for, for reading that much. Uh, okay, I think we have some more verses to go, right? Yeah, we have some of us to go. Yes, yes, Dev, please go ahead. Oh, Prince, yeah, go ahead. Okay. And in those days, it is to uh, a prompt 16, right? Yeah. Yes. Mine and brother, yes. brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled which Holy Spirit spoke it. Okay, uh, Prince, uh, unable to hear you actually. There seems the Holy Spirit spoken huh. before by the mouth of David concerning Judas. Okay, okay, sorry, Prince. I think uh, the network seems to be slow. Yeah, looks like. Uh, so sorry about uh, interrupting you there. Uh, I'll just uh, request another person to quickly go ahead and read. Yeah, quickly go ahead and read. Yeah, I'll read. Now. Okay, yes, thank you. Yeah. From verse 16, and said, brothers and, brother, and said, brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our num number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas brought a fig 
There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in the language Akatilama, that is, field of blood. For, for St. Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Uh, yeah, Siddharth, why don't you read the rest of it also? We can just quickly complete it. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Man. Yeah. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of them, one of the men who have been with us the whole time. The Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of us must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Bursa Bursabas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen. So take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the Lord fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Siddharth, for completing that and everyone else who who read. Uh, no problem, Prince. Sometimes it happens, the network, uh, you know, it, it's not fast enough. So that's okay. Uh, that's all right. But thank you for trying to read uh, today. Uh, we will get into chapter one and we will uh, look at all the things that actually took place. So, you know, it's more like uh, a story. Uh, for us because we are uh, watching different things taking place uh, in the lives of believers who uh, I, I could say disciples of Jesus not just the 12 apostles but there were others who were followers of the Lord Jesus uh, and they were all together okay so uh, let's see what exactly is happening uh, with these people now as we start off in Acts chapter 1, you know, we have to remember that it begins with the resurrected Christ. Okay. I told you that uh, the Lord Jesus died and then he rose from the dead. Uh, and uh, Acts chapter 1 is a place where you see the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and the book of Acts, we have talked about all the things that take place in this book. Uh, we can also consider this book as a bridge. Because after the Lord Jesus rose from the dead, uh, if there was no book of Acts, I mean, think about it. You would suddenly go to the epistles of Paul and then you know, Peter and John, uh, all these people, and you would wonder what happened. You know, we were reading about Jesus so far and now uh, there is a new person here, Paul. Who is he? How did he come into the picture? What is the background about him? So, you know, God in that way is so gracious to us. He has given us this book in the middle. It's called the Acts where we read about uh, how the church took the teachings of Jesus, how the church was empowered by the uh, Holy Spirit and they did the work which they were called to do. Uh, and as they were doing that, you know how uh, uh, the church was birthed, how the church grew, how did these uh, significant names in the church begin to appear? People like Paul the Apostle and, you know, uh, the uh, person like Tib Timothy, where, where did they all come from? So Acts gives us a good uh, uh, background about the rest of the New Testament scripture as well. So it's a nice bridge that you have in between the Gospels and the Epistles. So it begins by, uh, remember I told us that uh, Luke is the person who has authored this book and uh, he has uh, written this book somewhere, uh, you know, towards maybe after 60, 62, 63 AD, around, around that time because it... Uh, has it has the accounts of incidents that took 
place you know from the time of uh, uh, the lord jesus ascending to the time when paul was in prison so uh, this is also like an eyewitness account uh, you know uh, or or maybe he hasn't seen everything that has taken place but uh, contemporary like during his times these events have taken place uh, and there there are other extra biblical uh, writings as well that confirm these incidents that have taken place okay so luke is writing about all these things now you notice in the first verse itself he says the former account i made o theophilus of all that jesus began both to do and teach so he is telling us who is who he is writing this uh um, not a letter but an account a report to so he's writing to theophilus and uh, theophilus uh, according to historians seems to be someone who believes in god because the name theo is god uh, the term philus is somebody who loves god so uh, it's likely that theophilus is a, a believer and it's likely that theophilus is interested uh, in knowing the works of jesus and the works of the believers now it is also possible according to historians i mean they say that uh, theophilus could have been uh, uh, an official as well uh, because uh, maybe luke wrote this account to give it to him uh, to provide some evidence of paul's uh, innocence okay so you know how in the courts we have the lawyers arguing a case so now that paul is in prison maybe luke tried writing uh, a, a case report so that uh, paul can be released from his imprisonment and uh, theophilus could have been an official influential person in the government and uh, luke wanted wanted to hand this off to him so it's possible you know all, all these are the possibilities and what historians uh, suggest uh, so and he says that he is writing to theophilus of everything that jesus uh, notice he talks about the ministry of jesus not just in terms of his teaching but also in terms of what jesus did so that is uh, it, it encourages us in our ministry we are not just supposed to talk we are not just supposed to uh, share the word but we are supposed to live the life we are supposed to demonstrate the power of the holy spirit uh, in our lives and uh, luke points us to that that jesus both did and taught okay and the former account is the book of luke which he is referring to so some historians they point out and say um maybe luke wrote his gospel first and he wrote acts in continuation to it but those days you know they would prefer to keep the 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 scrolls to a certain uh, size and a certain weight otherwise they have to carry right if uh, somebody writes a lot then it would be uh, very heavy for for that script to be carried here and there so maybe luke wrote it in two batches one account former account which is the account of the life of jesus and the uh, latter account which is the account of what the the third person of the trinity the holy spirit uh, inspired and directed the people of god to do so that's how this book actually begins and uh, luke is uh, careful to point out these things now one more thing we have to re remember is that the book starts uh, uh, in acts chapter 1 but by the time we we reach acts chapter 28 we are talking about a span of 30 years okay roughly 30 years so we should not forget that right so it's 30 roughly 30 years that we are going to cover uh, in these 28 chapters and uh, Luke is writing about uh, all the significant things that happened in the church uh, in these 30 years okay so continuing from verse 1 now he goes on to uh, share that <coughs> Jesus until the day that he uh, was taken up into heaven uh, he did certain things so what are what are all these things that uh, he did 
uh, we are told that until the day in which he was taken up after he through the holy spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen so here are certain tasks that jesus is undertaking before his ascension one is that he is giving commandments to the apostles how is he giving commandments again even the resurrected christ is ministering through the holy spirit so we see that there is a very uh, important role the holy spirit plays in the life of uh, the believer uh, because you notice even jesus depended on the power of the holy spirit uh, in his physical body as well as in his resurrected body to do the work of the ministry so how much more should we depend on the uh, help and the support of the holy spirit so through the holy spirit uh, what did jesus do he gave some commands to the chosen uh, apostles now we know earlier in the uh, gospels we have seen 12 apostles okay they are also known as the apostles of the lamb uh, or, or you know these are these are the apostles who uh, the lord jesus uh, chose to to be under his wings right but later on we know that many other apostles also uh, rose up they did the work of uh, uh, the gospel you have people like paul uh, you know that there's mention of uh, other apostles in scripture but these 12 people uh, are are the ones whom the lord jesus instructed uh, he presented himself alive to to them uh, and you know that is something they were looking forward to because they had put their trust in the lord jesus and uh, he overcame death right he overcame death and uh, that uh, is is something that transformed their their lives because here is the messiah there's only the messiah who can overcome a uh, death who has uh, never sinned in the book of hebrews when we study about the life of jesus you know we we read that uh, he was tempted in every way yet without sin so no wonder you know he was he rose from the dead again by the power of the spirit we are told that he rose from the dead and he presented himself to these disciples of him to instruct them to give them some direction uh and when he was alive you know during these these uh, uh days on the earth as the resurrected uh, christ there are many infallible proofs right uh like he suffered and that was something that that uh, people noticed but also during his time of uh, uh, walking the earth you know he he with he presented himself and he spoke about the kingdom and he he ministered uh, in a in a powerful way and several people you know we see uh, in other writings that uh, several people actually saw uh, and heard what the lord jesus uh, did then he was seen for 40 days it says okay so 40 days from the time of his resurrection he uh, is is noticed okay uh, so you would realize okay time is passing by uh, and uh, when jesus was tried that was the time of passover so you know those of us who are interested in the jewish calendar uh, those of us who are interested in the jewish festivals you know you can uh, look at the timeline so passover was the time when when um, uh, you know jesus went through all the persecution the opposition the the uh, beatings and uh, you know that that mistreatment and finally the crucifixion on the cross uh, and then on the third day he rises again and the fourth 40 days after that you know he has presented himself to people several people saw him uh, and uh, you know he ministered especially to his own disciples okay uh, and he, what was he ministering you know you notice here in verse 3 he was ministering the things pertaining to the kingdom of god so that's very uh, fascinating for us about the kingdom of god i mean the resurrected christ knows that very soon he will leave the earthly ministry uh, so obviously he would talk about things which are important for us isn't it so we notice that he is talking about the kingdom of god so there are uh, truths about the kingdom of god that the church needs to know there are truths about the kingdom of god uh, you know which which god wanted to uh, open up he wanted to open up those treasures to his people so uh, 
God was ministering to them about these teachings. Now, why did Luke mention it? You know, one of the uh, reasons why Luke could have mentioned it is also to assure uh, that, you know, this is the teaching that the Lord Jesus actually brought. Because otherwise, what happens? You know, it's possible, um, given the kind of uh, speculation that pe people make these days, uh, people would have said, oh, the resurrected Christ taught about, you know, some new fancy teaching or the resurrected Christ taught about uh, something weird. People could, can come up with all kinds of things. But you know, Luke was careful enough to mention what the Lord Jesus taught. So uh, notice all this is historical, okay? It's not mythology, meaning uh, it's not uh, things that uh, someone has made up, but this is a historical account. And that's why even as I began teaching us today, I said that there are there is extra biblical literature to uh, kind of uh, affirm whatever has been written in the gospels, in the, in the book of Acts, so on and so forth. So we know that this is what the Lord Jesus was up to uh, in his resurrected body. So he was teaching his people. Now, isn't that also beautiful that, you know, this is what Jesus chose to do uh, in his last few days here on the earth, that is to be with those who believe him and to continue to instruct them. Now, Jesus knew that uh, though uh, he is not going to be here on the earth, it is these people who will carry on the work of God the same way that he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. They too would be empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue this great and wonderful work. So, what happens after he has uh, spoken to the disciples, after he has ministered to those who believe in him? Uh, from verse 4, we see that he commands them okay, to uh, wait in Jerusalem. Okay. Why? Why is he telling them to wait in Jerusalem? Remember I told you about the Jewish calendar, 40 days have uh, gone by. So what are we expecting? What are we expecting very soon? We are expecting the festival of Pentecost. Okay, And Pentecost was usually celebrated in the city of Jerusalem. And Jews from many different parts of, uh, you could say, the world would travel. They would come to the city, the holy city of Jerusalem, and they would celebrate Pentecost over there. So that is the reason. So he is telling them, he commands them to uh, stay in Jerusalem. Now, why? Why is he commanding them to stay in Jerusalem? No, he says, wait for the promise of the Father. Okay? And we notice that it's not a suggestion. It is a commandment. He commands them, you wait in Jerusalem. So if the Lord Jesus is commanding them to wait, obviously they are going to receive something without which they cannot continue the work that he is handing them. So what is this thing that they needed to wait for? No, we notice in that same verse, he says, the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for truly, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So he is asking them to wait for something which is very important. What is that very important thing? He calls it the promise of the Father. Okay, And he also goes back to the fact that during his ministry, people had only seen water baptism, which was to uh, uh, notify that People have repented from their sins towards God. Okay, uh, so what a baptism is is uh, uh, was common until then. But he's saying that these believers will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So you understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the promise of the Father, right? It is connected here. It is connected here. And Jesus is talking about the same thing, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, the promise of the Father, later on in Acts chapter 2, you know, you, we will see the prophecy of uh, Joel, where Joel, Joel mentioned 
that you know this is going to happen uh, and it actually happened so jesus is asking the believer to wait for the empowering of the holy spirit now you know uh, in the last class i gave you one grand introduction about uh, you know uh, acts being uh, that uh, uh, forest fire uh, acts being that uh, revival fire uh you know and acts being uh that that uh, book of the bible that inspires all of us because such was the supernatural demonstration of god's glory however if it is not if it was not for the outpouring of the holy spirit the apostles and the believers would have done nothing they would not have been able to accomplish anything no wonder the lord jesus tells them to wait a few days from now 40 days already over okay right so some more days remaining for the festival of pentecost during pentecost the holy spirit will be poured out and he tells them be careful not even to do any ministry nothing till that time you please wait only after you receive the baptism in the holy spirit okay you will be fit enough to do the work of god so what does it speak to us today the baptism in the holy spirit is so important for the believer without that you would not have the book of acts as inspirational as we are talking about uh, you know it being none of that would exist without receiving the baptism in the holy spirit so we cannot expect to do great things for god without the baptism in the holy spirit now the flip side of that is because the disciples received the baptism in the holy spirit we saw the remaining 20 you know seven chapters unfold powerful powerful mighty leading of the holy spirit in the same way we can expect the leading of the holy spirit the works of the holy spirit through our lives when we receive the baptism in the holy spirit but subtract that from our christian experience no we are not saying that we cannot live for god because even at this point the disciples were very much uh, following jesus very much living for god but there is something about the empowering of the holy spirit which can help us to walk in the supernatural they experience that through the baptism in the holy spirit and even for us today as we look ahead we must be uh, uh, you know uh, if we have received it wonderful if we have not received it the way jesus told them you wait you wait for it in jerusalem our hearts need to be hungry for the baptism in the holy spirit okay let's move forward from there i hope you all are doing okay is it too fast too slow yeah can i get a response okay good 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 everybody's fine great great wonderful okay let's let's move forward okay we were at verse 6 here and i was saying uh, that uh, so he asked them to wait so when they had come together right uh, now remember this is the last few uh, interactions which the believers have with jesus so he is telling them important things but they also want to ask important things from him so though he is mentioning about the holy spirit their question is very different what are they asking jesus he's they are saying lord will you at this time restore the kingdom of israel now these disciples were aware that scripture promises the physical restoration of the nation of israel okay and jesus in his teaching and preaching and also uh, shared with them that he is the one who has instituted the new covenant okay so based on what he said based on what scriptures say now there are passages in the book of jeremiah and the book of ezekiel that talk about the restoration of israel they knew that this resurrected christ 
is not going to be with them because he's telling them you know you wait because you will be empowered and all that so they knew they had a work ahead of them uh, but they thought they'd probably do this work in a perfect world okay a perfect nation where everything is restored so they're asking jesus lord when when is this you know uh, so tell us now are you going to restore the kingdom of israel what is the answer uh, that jesus gives them you know he said to them it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority okay so he is going back to the subject of the holy spirit so even uh, in our walk with the lord you know sometimes we have questions uh, which we think are important and we are asking him okay god this is the important time and you are telling me something important let me also ask you something important right but in this case you know, jesus knew yes that question is quite uh, uh, legitimate because uh, as a believer you know you would expect the messiah to restore the kingdom however you know uh, jesus knew that he must direct their hearts and minds to things that he feels they need to know okay not the things that they think they need to know so he actually does not give them an answer to that question he uh, kind of uh, uh, you know sidelines it and he says look there are certain things um, uh, there are some seasons times and seasons only the father knows okay what he is going to uh, do about it so basically he is saying that we will not understand everything and uh, there are certain things which god knows which he doesn't think is necessary for us to know okay uh, and some of the uh, theologians they also share their view that maybe jesus did not want to tell them that the the nation of israel will be restored after you know uh, 2000 years even now we know 1948 is when israel became a, a nation uh, or like officially but 2000 years you know jesus maybe he didn't want to mention that to the disciples at that point because they would not have had what it takes to understand it you know and uh, they also might have felt discouraged if jesus said the question was are you going to restore the nation of israel right now if jesus had answered that question and said no i am not going to restore it is going to take 2000 years the disciples would have been so discouraged oh no we thought you are the messiah and you are telling us 2000 years uh, have to go by before we see this fulfilled so <coughs> excuse me maybe he didn't want them to get discouraged right so uh, you see god also knows uh what is required to be uh spoken to his people so we could be asking him lot of questions but the holy spirit directs us you now god directs us to the things which are necessary for us to know okay so at this point jesus felt it's what the question you're asking it's not necessary for you to know the answer to that question but let me tell you what you, what is necessary for you okay and then he proceeds with that uh, one scripture now you could say that this is the key scripture of acts chapter 1 but it is also the key scripture of the book of acts itself what is it he says but bring your attention to what i am telling you forget about restoration of the nation of israel i'll do it i know when to do it father knows leave that discussion for later leave it to me okay the point is you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me in jerusalem in all of judea and samaria and to the end of the earth so he is bringing the focus lights you know if you uh, uh, know about skits and dramas that take place and you know stage lights you have the focus on one person was the main character and the main uh, thing that is unfolding over there but if you change the spotlight to you know someone else the attention goes to that person so in the same way god is shifting the uh, spotlight and he's saying the important thing for you to understand is that you need power i need power okay to do the work of god you know why are we still here if we are saved we are here on the earth because 
God wants us to take the gospel to the nations, right? The Great Commission, um, go into all the world and preach the gospel, uh, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Matthew 28. So we are here to continue to declare uh, the uh, gospel. We are here to continue to preach the kingdom of God. And so Jesus knows that the spotlight should be uh, on us receiving the empowering to do it. You know, that's the reason the disciples were still here on the earth. And Jesus is going back to, to heaven, but he knows that these people will continue the work. And the answer which they need is how to get the empowering to fulfill this work. Right, And that is why he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Where will you be my witnesses? You know, it's like we use the term concentric circles. Okay. So by that, you mean, you know, there is, there is an inner circle an outer circle and it just keeps expanding like the ripples in, uh, uh, in water. You throw a stone in a lake. What do you see? You see ripples, right? It just expands, keeps going to the next ripple and the next ripple, so on and so forth. So that's what Jesus is saying. You shall be my witnesses in all of Judea, Samaria, you know, and to the ends of the earth. So the, the power of who God is, it's going to be known everywhere, starting from where you are to the ends of the earth. Okay, And the term witness is there. Right, witnesses in the Greek language. This word witness, uh, it's uh, martus. Martus, okay. Martus means martyr. So, is Jesus saying that you're all going to die? No, that's not what he's saying. But he's saying the kind of uh, testimony that you will bear for my sake, you know, it's like a complete testimony. As if you were a martyr, you know, a martyr is willing to die, a martyr for the nation, a soldier who's on the front lines. You ask a committed soldier, he's proud to die for the nation. So that's a witness, right, for the nation. So that, that kind of a commitment, that kind of a testimony, you know, you bear for uh, uh, whoever, whoever or whichever nation or whatever cause you have pledged allegiance to. So he's saying that you will be a powerful, strong, determined testimony for me. But to be that testimony, what do you need? You know, the emphasis is on the outpouring, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus knows without that, it's not possible. You know, just with the teachings, okay, they already had the teachings of uh, Jesus and about the kingdom of God. Do you think they could just go and preach? No. Jesus knew that he also ministered through the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he was fully man. He was fully human. So he could not have had any, you know, so-called supernatural uh, experiences or, you know, uh, he never carried the glory of heaven with him. He was just a plain, simple man like you and me on the earth. So whatever Jesus did was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Same way we saw in this passage, the resurrected Christ. How did he minister to the disciples? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So he needed the Holy Spirit to do the work which God called him to do. So he understood that every believer also needs the Holy Spirit to do the work of the kingdom. Right. And that is why he's saying your mind is on all kinds of subjects. You want to know so many different answers. Nothing wrong with it. But let me bring your attention to what is very, very important. And that is. You need the empowering of the Holy Spirit. If you receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit, you shall be my martyrs, witnesses everywhere. Everywhere. You will be my determined witnesses. Right? Uh, and that is what the Lord Je Jesus wanted to make of the disciples. Now, I need not tell you uh, about each one of them. Right? They all had their own issues. You had uh, James and John, sons of thunder. So, you know, they seem to be people who probably had a bad temper. You know, they quickly uh, attacked somebody who 
uh, came against Jesus. You have a Peter who is denying Christ. You have a John who's always talking about, I am his favorite, I am his favorite, you know. So everyone had their own issues. Now, these kind of people, how are they going to bear witness uh, for Christ? But by the empowering of the Holy Spirit, it's possible. For any and every believer, no matter what their personality is, what their background is, you know, Jesus could have said, oh, these 12 people, what are they going to do? You know, I can't depend on them. I couldn't depend on them when I was alive. He could have said that. But he knew that whoever they were, whatever weaknesses they carried, yet, right, by the empowering of the Holy Spirit, these are the people who will become powerful for the gospel and they will take the gospel to the ends of the earth he knew what is going to make the difference the baptism in the holy spirit so he's telling them you please wait don't do anything till you receive that empowering and when you receive that empowering you know whatever i'm telling you it will happen the the fire will spread far and wide okay so uh i'm noticing that it's already uh um 9.50. Today, the intention was to complete chapter 1 and chapter 2, uh, but it seems like we are going a little um, slow in our pace, but that's okay because I really want us to have a good background. We can always pick up pace, you know, here and there. So don't worry too much about uh, uh, the portions, but uh, just soak in what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now and is speaking to me right now. Just receive that and uh, we'll continue from where we um, stop right now. We'll come back in 10 minutes and we will continue. So um, how is it going, everyone? Are you getting something out of this? Are you enjoying? Yes, Pastor. Yes, oh, okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, Great. All right. Praise God. Great, great. Okay, fine class. Let's take a small break, 10 minutes, and we'll be back to uh, continue. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs> 